And it was the young giant quarterback, Dave Brown, crashing in. So now the Meadowlands is alive with that late touchdown. But folks, you haven't heard anything yet. Wait until they take down number 56. Let's go back to the Meadowlands and Al Michaels. Al? Well, Brent, the ceremony taking place here tonight could very well have occurred at the Superdome in New Orleans, but it isn't. Because in 1981, the Saints chose running back George Rogers with the first pick in the draft, and that left Lawrence Taylor available for the Giants. That season, the rookie from North Carolina propelled the club to the playoffs for the first time in 18 years, and by the time his magnificent 13-year career would end, he'd wear two Super Bowl rings and be regarded as arguably the greatest defensive player ever. As the years progressed and he fought his way through substance abuse troubles that nearly short-circuited his career and fought his way past left tackles and tight ends, his image of the last angry man was transformed into an ethereal one, almost as if he had dropped in from another world. And maybe he did because no one dominated a game and no one redefined a position more than a man known primarily by the initials LT. In a word, he was relentless. What DiMaggio and Mantle were to the Yankees what Gershwin was to Broadway is what Lawrence Taylor has been to the Giants. And that's why right now in Giant Stadium, they'll immortalize him. Ladies and gentlemen, number 56, Lawrence Taylor. There's nothing I can say to add to this moment. Your fans have said it all. They've spoken for all of us. But for 13 years, you've brought great honor to this jersey. Take care of it, and no giant will ever wear it again. You know, I should be nervous, but I'm not, because I'm in my house. I'm with my friends. You know, this is one of the three proudest moments I've ever had in John Stone. One being in 98, I mean, excuse me, 81, when we beat the Dallas Cowboys to go to our first playoff in 20 years. Number two, been in 1987, when we beat the Washington Redskins in the playoff game to go to our first Super Bowl. And now today, to have my jersey retired. Great moment. There's a lot of people I'd like to thank. Of course, I'd like to thank Mr. Mara for always being there for me, like a father, and his family, who treated me like one of the members of their family. Also, I 
would like to thank Mr. Tish for all his wisdom he's shown me over the last three years. I would like to thank Bill Parcells. I would like to thank Bill Parcells for being such a big part of my life and showing me how to play the game of football correctly. And I'd like to thank my family and my friends for always being there for me. But this is not about Mr. Mara and all the other people I have recognized today, even though their contributions have been great. This is about me and you. The Giants fan. Because you've always been there, no matter what was said, no matter what was written, no matter what was going on in my personal life, we've always been in this thing together. Without you guys, there would have been a Lawrence Taylor, but there wouldn't have been an LT. Thank you very much. Lawrence Taylor owns Giant Stadium one final time. All right, we're talk about sports. Thank you, Bill Butel, for midnight tonight through March. The madness of the college basketball campaign is upon us, and here comes the red storm. Just under 40 minutes, Alumni Hall will be rocking to the Raptors. We're going to show you what it's like as it gets set to go at Alumni Hall for their first ever midnight madness session for St. John's. Standing by live is their head coach, Brian Mahoney, Coach, obviously the hoopla is abounding because of your two super freshmen coming in. But first, you have nine players, including three starters returning from a 12 and 17 team last year. Is your core good enough to contend for titles? Hey, Scott, you know, I'm, I'm having a tough time hearing you. As you can see, it's, it's quite noisy in here. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, let's talk about your super recruits. Felipe Lopez, a top high school player, and Zendon Hamilton. What do you hope for them to contribute immediately or not? Well, you know, they're definitely a, a, a major part to our program. And uh, uh, they're two special young players. And, of course, we're so excited that they both decided to come with us at St. John. Both local kids, and, and we feel they have a chance to be very special. Okay, what about the rest of your team? You've got a lot of guys returning, including uh, three starters. I mean, you've got to have a core here to go along with the Super Fries. Well, you know, we do have quite a few. We have uh, a, a group of juniors and also some seniors that uh, we're expecting good things to. You know, we're going to start tomorrow at noontime and, and try to build this thing, and, and I hope the chemistry will be right. Okay, can you tell us if it's gotten out of hand? Because now, right now, they're talking Big East titles. They may be even national titles with what you have with your super recruiting year. Well, you know, the, the league we're in, Scott, is very difficult. But, you know, we're trying to uh, put this team together. We know there's a lot of tough games ahead. And uh, I know this group is willing to, to really work hard and uh, hopefully give us a good performance this year. Brian, thank you. Steady as she goes. And uh, we'll see you down the road. Thanks so much for having us. Okay. Thank you, Brian Mahoney. NBA tonight. The ball game to their fans at midnight last night or this morning. Some folks thought the event was top drawer. Others went away disappointed. One sure thing is, the new nickname, Red Storm, hasn't caught on just yet. The cheer last night was, let's go Redmen. The gym was packed an hour and a half before midnight, and fans were bubbling with excitement. Oh, it's going to be hot, hot, baby, hot. 
Can't wait. Let's go. Crazy. This is the greatest. The red men are the best. The red men are going to do it. This is the red storm. We're going to do it. This is the year, man. A laser show kicked off the festivities. Cheerleaders used slingshots to launch t-shirts into the crowd. And as the clock struck midnight, it was time to introduce the Red Storm. And Midnight Madness turned into Felipe Lopez Mania. First of all, we got Felipe Lopez from the Bronx, our hometown guy. We got Felipe, baby, the best freshman in this city. It's the beginning of winning. The Felipe era starts today. Well, the Felipe era stumbled out of the block. Lopez couldn't find the range in the three-point contest. He missed both of his attempts trying to slam dunk. Rowan Barrett took the honors in the Jam Fest. In the scrimmage, the fans got a little taste of what Lopez is all about. I got two things to say. Go ahead. Felipe Lopez and Zenden Hamilton. And what does that mean come March? Final four, pal. Earth in the Big East and Final Four. Oh We're going to win it all. Felipe and the fans had a great time. Lopez got him a few jams, tossed T-shirts to the crowd, and chatted with a big St. John's fan, Bobby Bonilla. As Midnight Madness 1994 came to a close, the Red Storm huddled together and thought about what it'll take to bring a Big East title back to Jamaica Queens. Business. That was today, but the Felipe Lopez era at St. John's didn't get off to that great of a start yesterday. Question, how did he do today in the championship game of the Joe Lapchick tournament against Bowling Green? Mike Harris has the story. It was a tale of two halves for Sports Illustrated cover boy Felipe Lopez and the Red Storm. Lopez was not a factor early on, but Mo Brown scored seven points in the first seven minutes as St. John's took a 13-9 lead. That's what Mo Brown tonight did an outstanding job, you know, uh, uh, getting the ball, handling the pressure. Uh, and so it's really a team game. You can't just go with one guy. One guy's not going to be able to do it all. But if you can get five, six, seven, eight guys, then you got a chance to be a pretty good team. While the freshman of the front court struggled, junior Charles Midland did the job in the paint and out on the perimeter. Coach Brian Mahoney believes the lap chick tourney MVP will be the true leader of this year's squad. He came on so strong for us last year, uh, and, and he's starting out that way again, but that's the experience that he has. And I think he's going to really help Zendon and Nishan McLeod, because those, those three guys have to do the bulk of our front court work. Uh, on the court, I definitely have to like do stuff like rebounding, making the right decisions, talking to the guys, get them going on defense and on offense. As for Lopez, he just couldn't get it going in the first half. This is Lopez, wants to move, off balance, first time they've trailed in the tournament. Lopez for three, top of the key, in and out and out. This ball is stolen by Lopez, he's ahead of the field, but he got caught for traveling. He's got have to understand when to take the shot, maybe when not to rush, and, and to use that uh, quickness that he does have. Meanwhile, Bowling Green's Shane Klein Ruminski led a 10-3 Falcons run, and St. John's found itself trailing 27-24 late in the half. Midland's blue-collar work inside, and freshman guard Tariq Turner's dazzling drive put the Red Storm back in front. They led by eight at the half. Then Felipe Lopez began to write the second half of the tale. Midland steps in, and it's there's Lopez, behind the back! Oh, ho, 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 ho. I thought for that dunk, that was like a turning point for myself because from there on, I, I hit a three, then I came back and, and hit right off the glass. So it was one of those moves that you just get you going. Lopez finished with 22 points as St. John's held off Bowling Green 77-64 to win their 20th straight lap kick tourney. I thought it was a very good win for us to be able to, uh, every possession became important and they had a scratch all way. No surprise that the Red Storm won the lap kick tournament. No surprise again that Felipe Lopez turned in an eye-popping, crowd-pleasing move. But what may be surprising is that Felipe Lopez is human and he's got a lot to learn as a freshman. For Sports Extra, I'm Mike Harris. 7th Avenue. 
but we're not talking about Carnegie Hall. He plays to a sellout crowd of nearly 20,000 every night. Maybe you've heard some of his greatest hits. Or, or maybe, Madison Square Garden's music man is Ray Gastaldi. He sets the rhythm every night. I'm just a fan up here with the ability to make a lot more racket than your average fan down in the stand. From up where I am, I have a fairly good view of the arena, and I also have uh, a television monitor to watch the game as well. And I really try to be as spontaneous as possible and follow the flow of the game. Ray wears a couple of different musical hats. Not just the organ, he's kind of like a DJ, too. This is the debut of this number. Let's hope it goes well. I try to kind of do the best of both worlds up here. I, I keep the traditional organ stuff alive, but try to bring in the, the new modern sound. See if we can get something here. There are certain moments in a game. If at that moment I, I hit him really hard with it with an organ shear or a song, it can really rev the crowd up and give the team a, a real boost. Ray Casaldi is a featured artist and also helped arrange a new Jock Rock CD. At his next live company tonight, they join North Carolina, Kentucky, and Kansas as the only programs ever to win 1,500 games. Still some embarrassing moments in that time, like number 31, Zenden Hamilton, wearing his jersey backwards. Against Fordham, the other freshman, Felipe Lopez, a slow start, but once he got flying, got a technical for hanging on the rim, but still St. John's let it. Still Fordham wouldn't go away. John Henry on the drop. Adams within eight at the half, even got within four, and the red storm didn't blow it open. It's Lopez, flick to Hamilton. St. John's is slap happy. 665, they beat Fordham, number 1500. Also, Seton Hall. Bring in the new year in college basketball. We focus on the fresh faces of the game, the new stars who have to replace the heroes of tournaments gone by. And we can say that we have already seen the future, and Felipe Lopez is his name. Felipe Lopez came to New York City and converted Rice into a city and state fan. He was named the National High School Player of the Year, and this time the hype was bilingual for a teenager from the Dominican Republic who never forgets where he came from. I just want to, like, really stand being my spouse so the kids can really, like, See somebody that's a pop in it, in it so they can in a way encourage themselves to become the best that, that they want to be. Felipe, the freshman, has already shown that he can be the best. His double-digit scoring has led the rejuvenated Red Storm to its best start in four years. What's more, his charisma and the fact that he's a local guy playing the city game with such flair add to the excitement. But so far, the hoopla and the headlines from coast to coast have not gone to his head. It's just me because I get media attention. It made me feel special better than the, than the other guys in the team because I still get my behind kick. Felipe, he's a, he's a great player. He has a very good sense of the game, very good feel of the game. And also he's a very nice person. He goes along with most of the guys on the team. And that, that's his plus for the team. Back home in the Bronx, Felipe has virtually cornered the market on trophies and awards. But what this Dominican dandy really prizes most is his close-knit family. Yo diría que Felipe is a natural person that he has as a person. Uh, it's not difficult for him to handle himself the way he does, just because that's the way he is. It's definitely something that happens in this country, uh, that you have so many kids that play the basketball game, and unfortunately they don't have those people behind them and helping them to do the right thing. Felipe's family taught him to do the right things, and the rest he taught himself through hard work. There's going to be some tough nights. This is going to be a learning experience for him as we go. Hey, things are not going to be that easy. He can't sneak up on anybody. And, but for him to, to be willing to put in those hours, and, and you know, a lot of times I'll come back after practice an hour, an hour and a half later, and I look down, I hear the ball bouncing, and it's Felipe. I know what it takes to really get where you want 
the hard work that you put into it. It's the only way that's going to help you to really achieve the goals that you want to get. And you'll get a chance to enjoy Felipe Lopez in action next Sunday at 2 o'clock. You in New York. Okay. Trips on the floor. Lopez. Hamilton nearly lost it. Lopez fouled by Jahidi White. St. John still has a shot at some kind of tournament bid. And they can give thanks to the referees for that. The Red Storm went to the foul line 59 times against Georgetown today. And it helped them beat the Hoyas. Mike Harris got the story. Allen Iverson's first trip to the Garden started off fast with a steal and some great buckets. While Iverson was enjoying some first-half fun, St. John's freshman standout Felipe Lopez was struggling offensively, but contributing in other ways, setting up Zendon Hamilton on two of his 21 points. Now the team stepping up as a team. All in the season, we saw a lot of, you know, individual stuff. Now most of the guys are happy because we get an emotion now. Everybody's getting the shot they're supposed to. It wasn't a total garden party for the highly touted Iverson. This bad pass got him yanked from the game by Hoyas coach John Thompson. It's a nice show, you know, the turnovers. I mean, I do that a lot, a lot. You know, I'm just going to stick, stick with it and just listen to him. I, mean, I think I'll be all right if I listen to coach. St. John stayed close to the Hoyas with some great defensive work in the second half and were able to put a dent in Georgetown's nine-point halftime lead. We bounced back and came in the second half and really put it on them. We strapped the defense on them and things like that, and it worked out for us. Roshan McLeod stepped up and made some huge shots for the Red Storm, as well as a big block on Iverson. You know what, I got blocked that shot down at the end, and, and he drove him, and he finally got up there and got a piece with the big play. So he gave, gave us a great lift in that second half. After his block, McLeod put the game away with this three-pointer. Oh I've hit a couple of those throughout my career, and, uh, you know, it's, it wasn't something that I'm very used to doing, but, you know, when you have to take it, I mean, there's nothing you can do. The shot clock was winding down, and I just took the shot. I mean, I wasn't really thinking. I just, it was a reaction to, to shoot the ball. And the Red Storm put themselves in pretty good shape for an NIT bid with their 86-77 to 77 win over the Hoyas. We're finally getting getting to the point where, where we thought would be. It took a little bit longer, but we're starting to gel and mesh, and, uh, and hopefully we can play a couple more weeks. Today's game marked the end of Felipe Lopez's first regular season at St. John's. While he's probably not satisfied with the team's 14-12 and 12 record, we asked Lopez if he's satisfied with his freshman season. I think I, I can still take a whole lot of lesson out of it. And definitely, I just learned, you know, um, as a team, I think we're playing great. That's something that... There's no bitterness here. I, I'm not upset. Um, we, we fought a good fight, and we did it the right way, and we're contented with what we come out with. The Knicks made out. In 1979, the mandate was to lead the team to its first Super Bowl. The early years were filled with promise, but injuries to Sims and generally mediocre personnel kept the Giants at arm's length from a the title. Then in 1986, in his eighth season, Phil Sims guided his club to the NFC Championship. And in Super Bowl 21 against Denver, he was near perfect. On the brightest stage, Sims played his greatest game, completing 22 of 25 passes and winning the MVP award as the Giants mauled at Denver. Four years later, he blazed a regular season trail that would lead the Giants to another Super Bowl in a triumph over Buffalo. He'd be forced to watch from the sidelines on crutches. By then, though, he'd become the people's choice because of his skills and heart. No quarterback consistently absorbed more punishment, and his resilience was what the Giants fans admired most. Tough guys should come to work with a three-day growth. Mood dark and brooding. Mud cake hands and a raspy voice. Phil Sims showed up every week with a Mountain Dew sparkle and a Kentucky lilt and craftsman's hands running through white blonde locks. Phil Sims gave Puff a different look. And that's why his number 11 will be retired now. The PA announcer is Jim Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, number 11... Phil Sims. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the 50-yard line where Giants President Wellington Mara will make a special presentation. Bill, before I ask you to put number 11 on one more time in Giants Stadium, I want to tell you that the Giants plan to have our own Giant Football Hall of Fame someday soon here in our home stadium. It goes without saying that you will be one of the very first inductees into that Hall of Fame. And Lawrence Taylor also. I think you both know that you are ready in my own personal Hall of Fame. Phil, as I give you this jersey, I know that I share the mixed emotions of all the giant family. There are regrets and there is sorrow that this is the last time. But there is also gratitude and all abiding pride that you did wear our colors, you wore them so long, you wore them so well, and your wearing brought such honor to us. And now, number 11 is yours to keep always and to cherish, just as all of us will always keep and cherish the unforgettable memories you leave with us and the class that you brought to us. Thank you. God help. Thank you. Let me start out saying thank you to Mr. Mara and the Mara family for pro providing an atmosphere as an athlete that gave me every chance.